a generous and kind soul who loves his alma mater and importantly is a true colleague and friend. Dan is evidence of the relationship between the work put into a collegiate education and the benefit derived from it. Dan places high value on hard work and he places an even higher value on serving his customers. Ladies and gentlemen, I present Mr. Dan Milstein. Good morning, President Sullivan, fellow trustees, faculty members, and of course, the excited graduates of Cleary University. Thank you for that kind introduction, and thank you to the Board of Trustees for this honor. A very special thank you to the members of the armed forces and their families for their service and sacrifice. And a special congratulations to those service members who are receiving their degree today. Being up here today is deeply personal for me. Not only because I'm able to share this with my family and friends, but also because it symbolizes a major milestone in the journey from another world and another life, thousands of miles away. I came to the United States as a teenager with just 17 cents in my pocket and one suitcase stuffed to the brim. Most kids at that age are figuring out who to ask to prom or how to save enough money to buy their first car. But my family and I were taking a huge risk, leaving everything we knew in the Soviet Union, family, friends, home, jobs, and even our own way of life for a chance at something much greater. On a cold December night in 1991, we arrived in America to a subsidized one-bedroom apartment. There were five of us. We were living in footsteps and didn't speak English or know any good places to get jobs. We had nothing besides the memories that we could carry in our suitcases and in our pockets. All we had was the hope that once we took this gamble, our dreams would come true. I have benefited from the support of many teachers, mentors, associates, and others. The wonderful thing about involving people in your dreams is that they get to watch you as you reach your big milestones. I can't tell you how proud my grandmother and parents were as they watched me graduate from Cleary 10 years ago. They were my biggest supporters along the way. Today is the day of dreams fulfilled again, my own and yours. As they travel around the country in speaking engagements, I often hear recent graduates and young, and young professionals talk about some of the same things that worried me when I came to America. They worry about getting jobs or starting their own business. They say unemployment is too high, economic recessions, financial meltdowns, and many other reasons will pose challenges too difficult to overcome. I know how bleak the path ahead can look, but the bottom line is you have to make your dreams come true. No one else is going to do it for you. I would like to share a couple of stories about people facing challenges and making their dreams happen. The first is about a businessman named Amadeo Giannini, who lived in the San Francisco Bay Area in the early part of the 20th century. He opened his business in an old saloon and catered to the hardworking immigrants that others would not serve at the time. Shortly after Giannini set up a shop, the great earthquake struck in 1906 Homes were reduced to rubble. Rather than leave the area, as many did, he decided that he would help the members of the area by lending the money, proclaiming that San Francisco would be the first to raise from the ashes. Since most of the banks in the area had been destroyed and were unable to loan money, Giannini set up a plane across two barrels at the corner of an intersection. There, he collected deposits and made rebuilding loans to businesses based on a handshake. He got the economy moving again. Little did anyone know at the time that the slums and deposits would form the basis of the portfolio that would later become Bank of America, one of the largest financial institutions in the, in the world. He didn't invent commercial lending. 
But what he did do, he took a fresh perspective on an old idea. He accomplished what others thought was impossible by not being afraid to dream big. Yes, you have to balance your dreams with reality. Always be careful of listening too closely to those who tell you dreams are too wild, too impractical, and not possible. Believe when most doubt, work when most play, win when most lose, dream when most sleep, and be focused when most are undecided. Let me tell you about a mortgage company founded by a 24-year-old with a vision to provide the American dream of home ownership. This company, with only one employee, opened its doors to the public 12 years ago in a tiny space that was used as a closet by its previous tenant. It had $3,000 in startup capital. Seven years later, the worst financial meltdown in the history of the world occurred. Banks were paralyzed and stopped lending. Stock market crashed. Unemployment was at the worst level since the Great Depression. Many people were losing their jobs, their homes, and their life savings. Wall Street household banks, such as Bear Stearns and Lehman Brothers, along with thousands of other banks and lending institutions, were forced to shut down and seek protection under bankruptcy law. Mortgage giants Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac were seized by the government. By the time the founder was 31 years old, with little less than 12 years' experience in the banking industry. His company now had 100 employees and two offices. The financial meltdown required a major shift in his overall focus. More than ever, he felt responsibility to his employees, and many more, spouses, children, and their families who depended on his company's stability. He was enjoying his very successful career, but the company's future was not about him. The overriding goal was preserving the jobs and the livelihood of his employees. When the global financial meltdown hit, he told his people that his mortgage company would not participate in the world's recession. At the time, many employees' family members were losing their jobs daily. This young president made a pledge to his people that no matter what happened, no, no one would lose their jobs even if he had to infuse his own life savings to make the payroll. Within six months, over 60% of the industry competition closed their doors permanently. This company cleaned its balance sheet and never stopped lending. It was their moment to shine. By 2008, the company's revenues were up 712%. Over 200 new jobs were created and four new offices opened. His business made the Inc. 500 list of the fastest growing companies in the United States. This expansion was once again doubled the following year. In 2012, 12 years later, this company is the 42nd largest residential lender in the United States with over 500 associates and 48 offices across the country. Today, not so young anymore, I stand in front of you as the founder and chief executive officer of Gold Star Mortgage Financial Group. I achieved my dreams thanks to my hard work and co-workers and their dedication, but also because of Cleary University, which gave me the tools I needed to make my vision a reality. Much like a 100-year-old story of Bank of America, the story of Gold Star Mortgage Financial Group is still being written. A dream doesn't become reality through magic. It takes sweat, determination, and hard work. As you begin your postgraduate journey, I think some great advice is to throw away your store-bought map and create your own pathway to achieve your dreams. One of my hopes for you today is that you continue dreaming on a grand scale. Dream about being the top professional in your field, about starting your own company, or becoming a senator. Whatever you dream about, Dream about being the best that you can possibly be. The road will not always be easy. When you encounter setbacks or roadblocks, do not underestimate the power of determination and innovation. Don't let failure stand in your way. Most successful people have failed on their way to achieving their goals. Henry Ford's early businesses failed and left him broke five times. 
before he founded iconic Ford Motor Company. As a young student, Thomas Edison was told by his teachers that he was too stupid to learn anything, and his ideas were too impractical. Of course, his invention illuminated the world. Abraham Lincoln had numerous business failures, lost seven elections, and barely got 100 votes in his quest for the vice presidential nomination before finally being elected as the 16th president of the United States. I stumbled myself a couple of times before I earned success. Just as Henry Ford, Thomas Edison, Abraham Lincoln, and many others did, they had to experience it before they could be great. Experience is always the hardest teacher because it gives the exam first and then teaches the lesson. It is important to avoid spending too much time trying to choose the perfect opportunity that you miss the right opportunity. Recognize there will be failures and acknowledge that there will be obstacles. There is very little learning in success. Instead, you must learn from your mistakes and the mistakes of others and use innovation to overcome your obstacles. Take Kenneth Cole, for example, the famous designer who faced many challenges starting his company. He wanted to showcase his new line of shoes during the Fashion Market Week at the Hilton Hotel in New York. Not an easy thing to do. He couldn't afford to purchase a hotel room or a showroom to exhibit his line and wanted to sell them on the street instead. The problem was that only companies that could get street permits were either utility companies or movie companies. So he changed the letterhead to Kenneth Cole Productions and went to the city hall to apply for a license to shoot a movie called The Birth of a Shoe Company. They had fully furnished 40-foot trailer, stage lights, a director, rolling cameras, and models as actresses. In two and a half days, they sold over 40,000 pairs of shoes. To this day, the formal name of his company remains Kenneth Cole Productions, to highlight the importance of innovation and creativity. Colin Powell once said, there are no secrets to success. It is the result of preparation, hard work, and learning from failure. Whether you already found your calling today, or if you're still searching, your dream should be what drives you to succeed. As you accept your diploma today, think proudly of what you have accomplished and what you still have planned. I join your family members in congratulating your achievement, and I wish you great success in the future. Thank you very much.